Hey everybody, Doug here, and welcome to our Kita FX conventional panel series of videos. In this video, we will show you the steps needed to ensure a successful installation of the FX10 conventional fire alarm panel. First, prepare your site. Make sure that your installation location is free of construction dust and debris. Also, avoid installing the panel in areas of extreme temperature and humidity. The recommended temperature range for this control panel is 32 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 to 49 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity should be between 5 and 93 percent non-condensing at 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. When installing your cabinet, please check with your local or national codes to ensure that the cabinet is going to be mounted at an acceptable height and location before permanently affixing the cabinet. When you want to surface mount this panel, you will position the cabinet to the wall surface. You'll fasten the cabinet to the wall utilizing the surface mounting holes provided in the back box. If you need to semi flush mount the cabinet, order the F trim 10R. The F-Trim 10R comes with four flanges, one for the top, one for the bottom, and one for each side. You'll install the flanges on the cabinet utilizing the holes provided in the back box. Also notice that on your vertical flanges, one flange has a set of holes cut into it. This tells you that this particular flange will mount to the door side of the wall box. The purpose of the holes in the flange is so that the flange will fit around the hinges of the control panel door. Once you have all four flanges attached to the wall box, secure them to the wall box utilizing the lock nuts provided with the trim kit. Next, frame your interior wall as required so that you can support the full weight of the cabinet and the standby batteries. You'll fasten the cabinet to that framing material utilizing the semi-flush mounted holes provided in the wall box. Next, I recommend removing the plastic bezel from the control panel if you haven't done so already. Connect your AC power wiring next, but before connecting that wiring to the control panel, ensure that your circuit breaker is in the off position. Connecting your AC power wiring, we recommend you connect your ground wire first You'll connect the ground wire to the terminal marked with the ground symbol. Next, connect your neutral wire to the terminal marked with the letter N. Lastly, connect your hot wire to the terminal marked with the letter L. When you go to connect your field wiring to the control panel, we recommend that you first meter that wiring for opens, shorts, and grounds. This ensures that you avoid damage to the control panel when powering it up for the first time. Also notice that all of your wiring is power limited except for the AC and the battery wiring. Maintain quarter inch spacing between your power limited and non-power limited wiring at all times. We recommend that you keep your power limited wiring in the shaded area of the wall box and your non-power limited wiring in the unshaded area. When you install your backup batteries, the FX10 cabinet will support up to two 18 amp hour batteries. Batteries larger than 18 amp hours will require that you use the BC1 battery cabinet. The BC1 battery cabinet can support up to two 12 volt 40 amp hour batteries, but also keep in mind that the maximum charging capacity of the FX10 panel is 24 amp hours. That wraps up our FX10 installation video. If you'd like some additional information, please visit our website, kidda-fire.com, or you can select the link below and you'll return to our YouTube site where you can view some additional product videos.